coming up on your ATV News. A bank robbery that led to a car chase? We'll fill you in on how it all turned out. Flames down in this basement. Find out what caused it. And why this building isn't in ashes. It's cold outside. And you know in Logan, the snow is inevitable. I'll tell you when the next chance of sunshine is on an ATV weather. We have the top moments of Aggie sports so far this semester. And the top player in the NFL Combine is an Aggie. Your ATV news starts right now. Welcome to ATV News. I'm Eric Jungblut. And I'm Katrina Warburton. An Ogden man sits in jail after a bank robbery and a car chase in Brigham City Tuesday evening. Beasley, shown here being treated by medical staff, walked into a Chase bank around closing time and demanded money from the teller. When Beasley decided he didn't have enough money, he robbed the second teller. Beasley then took off on foot before carjacking a man at gunpoint who was pulling into a driveway. There was a four-year-old girl in the back seat and Beasley had a struggle with the mother before she was able to take her daughter away from the truck. A police officer saw Beasley speeding around a corner and eventually crashing into a cement barricade. Police say Beasley was biting and spitting on the officers before being apprehended. We were able to catch up to the car jacking victims and talk to them about their quick thinking during this stressful situation. Once I seen that gun fall to the floor, my first reaction was to just grab it and throw it out towards like the bed of the truck, possibly to the road. That's when I, the adrenaline started rushing and it's when you stop thinking and just start reacting. Beasley was booked into Box Elder County Jail and is being held without bail. A man is dead after a roof collapse in Brigham City Tuesday morning. Our Marie Tietze is live with more on the story. Marie? Thanks, Eric. Yeah, after an investigation, we will know a little bit more on this story, but what we do know is that it was a planned roof collapse. A demolition worker was killed Tuesday morning preparing for a planned collapse on the roof of this old Kmart building. We knew that there were four people that were involved in a construction process on the roof. One had left the roof for an undisclosed reason, and as the roof gave way, uh, the one person who was unaccounted for was on the inside and did become trapped. Police and firefighters were on scene searching with shovels and their hands for the man trapped beneath the rubble. Everybody's here to make sure uh, everything is documented and uh, you know the, the appropriate uh, steps are taken. And uh, right now the police are here probably as, uh, as caution, as, as just caution of the city. The building was a part of a lot of smaller buildings, but this was the only part of the structure that was going to be demolished. The building has been vacant for over 10 years and was just recently bought by Utah State University for the Brigham City campus. Police say that they found the man's body about two hours after their search began, but not before checking the building for the searcher's safety as well. There's increased risk everywhere. There's, uh, uh, we, have a, we had to make sure the building was, was sound before we could even go in. And so there was no more collapse danger, and then um, there's, there's a fair amount of debris in there they have to search through. Brigham City emergency responders say that the accident will be investigated by the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. The name of the man has yet to be released to the public, but what we do know is that he was a 38-year-old father from Sandy, Utah. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Marie. OSHA started their investigation Wednesday morning, which will hopefully provide more information on the cause of the accident. The AGRS building at USU is less than a year old, but a fire Tuesday night could have, had, could have done some serious damage. Cash <laughs> Firefighters responded to an alarm after a research project caught fire in the basement lab. The fire marshal says a piece of cardboard was sitting too close to a heater, causing it to ignite. According to Logan Fire, the flames could have spread quickly if it wasn't for the emergency sprinkling system. While damages are estimated at $25,000 and all the research will most likely be lost, the fire marshal said all things considered, it could have been much worse. It is a good story about fire suppression technology and 
everything being up to date and being in place. And uh, it did help bring this to a somewhat uh, positive end. The fire marshal said that if this had happened in the old ag building where research projects were being done before, there wouldn't have been any sprinkling system to put out the fire. Coming up after the break, we'll show you what brought Cache Valley protesters outside the courthouse. And the creators of Napping Aggies give, you, give some information that just might keep you awake. Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. Career Services is in the business of doing four primary things. First is career exploration. The second is co-op internship opportunities. The third area is career employment. And lastly, we provide assistance with grad school prep and testing. We're open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Students can come in to make an appointment. We're located on the ground level of the University Inn, and our webpage is www.usu edu forward slash career. We are an art museum, so there are not too many museums that specialize in collecting art, and we collect uh, contemporary and modern art, which is very different than most art that's shown in the valley. We're directly next to the new performance hall, and we are always free, uh, and so it's a cheap date, <laughs> and it's a nice quiet place just to, you know, enjoy looking at some different things that maybe you wouldn't see here normally in Cache Valley. You don't have to travel you know, to see the West Coast, you can just come here and see the artwork. Some people in Cache Valley are fed up with the area's poor air quality, and they told the county council about it last night. The, the group rallied in front of the historic Cache County Courthouse Tuesday night to protest what they see as inaction by the county. Protesters held signs and even wore surgical masks to prove their point. Many people also stayed for a public hearing about emissions testing. Of those who spoke, most agree while testing isn't the only answer, some course of action is better than nothing. I don't believe that anyone in this country has the constitutional right to pollute. I do not feel whoops, that the air quality is all that bad here. If somebody doesn't like Cache Valley for some reason, they are free to leave. You have our support as, um, you know, for emissions testing. We might be a, a little bit more silent than maybe we should be, but I think I would really like you to just see if you're for emissions testing, if you could just raise your hand. County officials say they will likely vote on the issue at their March 12th meeting. Last week, we introduced you to Napping Aggies. This week, Lauren Brewer shows you the masterminds behind the trend. <laughs> You might want to watch out for these two on the prowl if you're napping in the TSC or anywhere else on Utah State University's campus. They are the founders of Napping Aggies, and if you're napping like this guy, they might take a picture and post it online. This guy seen here isn't the only one. There are plenty of students with pictures plastered on Napping Aggies. Oh, this is a good one. This is a really good one. These two said the idea to post pictures like they are right here all started when they took a picture of themselves with a sleeper on the quad. It was funny and so I tweeted about it and it got a lot of response and Aggie Life Feed retweeted it and so a bunch of the students saw it and we just thought it'd be funny. It was funny the first time so it'd be funny if we just turned it into an account. <laughs> but just because it's funny doesn't make it right. What if there's a picture of you that you don't want ending up online? Is that a violation of your privacy? And is there anything that you can do about it? We were super worried that people would be like, why did you put my picture on there? And we get a lot of angry complaints. And so we decided that if anyone complained in the slightest, we'd immediately comply and take the picture down, do anything we could to make it right, because we're not out to hurt anyone. Up till now, the duo says that none of the pictures they posted on Napping Aggies has drawn a complaint. So back to this guy. He didn't know about his picture being taken. What is his reaction to being on Napping Aggies? Yep, that was me. <laughs> cool. 
I had it coming. I was in a public place. And other USU students and Epping Aggie fans aren't bothered either. I think college kids are so tired normally as it is that we can sleep anywhere. And I don't think it matters if people are going to be taking our picture. <laughs> I think if we're tired, we're going to sleep. Lauren Brewer, ATV News. Mary Brook and Pope say that they are surprised at how quickly Napping Aggies has grown. They say that the fans submit over 20 pictures a day and that the Instagram account alone has over 1,300 followers. If you want pictures to be sure, if you want to see more pictures, be sure to check out Napping Aggies on Instagram or Twitter. A battle of the bands shook the Nelson Fieldhouse Saturday, but you might be surprised to find out who put on the event. I set out to find the details. People brace snow and cold temperatures Saturday to get to the Battle of the Bands at the Fieldhouse. The evening featured local bands and all proceeds went to the group that organized the event, USU's chapter of the Fight the New Drug organization. Fight the New Drug is an organization to try and educate the public about what exactly pornography does. Um, like just the facts about what it does to the brain and to relationships. So it's not about sending a moral, uh, a moral standard on it, but it's saying, hey, if you're going to choose this, here's what it does. Fight the New Drug was founded in Utah more than a decade ago, and the USU chapter started in spring 2011. Chapter President Jacob McBride said Battle of the Bands was held for both fundraising and to gain attention for the group. Like a lot of people don't know what Fight the New Drug is, they don't understand what the new drug is that we're trying to fight, and so we just put this on, raise awareness that we exist, we're not out here to put people down, we just put on fun stuff, you know. Fight the New Drug wants to get its message across to high school and college age kids, so they figure what better way to get the attention of young minds than with a battle of the bands. So lately we've been trying a lot more to reach out to um, local schools, get involved, like we'll have a fight night next month on the 26th, and so we're trying to get them to come, get some like middle school, high school students to come, who maybe don't, um, aren't sure about all of what they're doing, um, aren't sure about uh, pornography or if it's dangerous or whatever, so. The band sold tickets on campus to get the word out about the show. Band members were supportive of Fight the New Drugs message. Yeah, we sold a couple of tickets uh, for, the, for the cause. We were, you know, giving uh, charity stuff. So it was, it's a good cause and I, I totally believe in it. So we're here to play, but we're also here to uh, raise some money for a good cause. Eric Jungla, ATV News. In addition to Battle of the Bands, Fight the New Drug holds discussion groups and other events during the year. You can find more information on their Facebook page or at fightthenewdrug.org. You probably know what a traditional beauty pageant is like, but have you ever seen a traditional Native American pageant? ATV's Tamara Bradley went out to see how these girls competed for the crown. Contestants dance to traditional Native American music at the Miss Indian USU pageant last Monday night. Three girls took the ballroom stage in a competition for the title. Each contestant showed demonstrations of modern and traditional talents. You know, one of the things that I was kind of keyed in on was what I felt like was the amount of preparation that they may have put into it. That seems to be one of the one of the criteria for me is like, you know, just how much how much work do you really put in in, in preparing for the for the pageant. Miss Cash Valley Lindsay Lopez and former Miss Indian USU Lindsay June gave performances that night as well. June then passed her title on to Stacey Danette Sosi, who is crowned first place winner. But this isn't just like any other beauty pageant. Culture plays an important role in the selection of the winner. I think this is different because it encourages like young women of Native American background to be involved with something outside of just like the modern college experience. And so it really encourages them to just do something different and go back to their roots. A lot of pageants, I mean, they're talent and, and things like that, but I really think of them as being like beauty contests. And to me, this is it's almost like a cultural contest and, and not so much of a focus on swimsuits and high heels and the catwalk and all that kind of stuff. Also, just by keeping the traditions in our home,
involved in it, so she said she and the other girls spent a lot of time together before the pageant. We had photo shoots, we practiced our skits a couple of times. The most exciting part about winning is the fact that I didn't think I was going to win. I was pretty sure that one of the other two would win and I wasn't like expecting it at all. So that was really, really, un yeah, just surprising. Blew me out of the water. Tamara Bradley, ATV News. Besides the pageant, the Native American Student Council at Utah State hosts other activities and scholarship opportunities throughout the year. So Lee, it is really cold out there. Are we going to see any relief at all here soon? Yeah, it's extremely cold out there. I hope to have some good news for you guys here in a minute. That'd be great. <laughs> oh. Stop paying those expensive citations. <laughs> I think it actually worked out. Stop putting quarters in the meters and always running out of time. Stop having to pay for parking by the hour. Instead, visit the Transportation and Parking Office and buy a parking permit. Then you can go on to Happy Parking. USU Police Department first started in September of 81. We're here for more than just criminal response. We do a, a wide variety of community services. We do presentations for various organizations that uh, want information perhaps on alcohol abuse, theft prevention. The USU Police Department is here to provide assistance to the community and that assistance comes through fingerprint services, lead ins, motorist assist, personal escorts, a number of things that we do outside of the scope of just criminal investigation. All your cares are over. Not so fast there, pupil. You still need to decide on a career. Don't worry about that announcer guy. Come on into the Career Center located in the University Inn and discuss your goals and concerns with advisors who are here to help you get into the fields that you're interested in. There are many resources including counseling, a career coach, publications, professional interviews, and much more to help you get that job. The Career Center, 797 quadruple seven. So Lee, I was out this morning and I was like, I got to my car and it was so hard to scrape all the ice off. It took me like half an hour and then there was a guy next to me who was doing it and he actually slipped on the ice. <laughs> it was so bad. Yeah, you're preaching to the choir. I understand how cold it is and I'm excited for it to get warmer. Yeah. Let's take a quick look outside though. Okay, and as you can see, this is a quick shot of on campus. There is snow around. Um, hopefully it goes away soon though. And to me. Okay, I'm. That's me, with green behind me, and my lovely anchors. And okay, here we go. So here is the current air quality, and as you can see, Utah is still bad, but it's not as bad as it possibly could be, because I mean, there's other places that are just as bad, and you, Logan's been worse. And so now onto the national level, you can see that down in New Mexico area, there's a little bit, and then there's some spots over in the east, which could have the same air quality problems that we're having. To the national weather though, um, Logan and Utah and Wyoming, all that in the rocky area, very cold, tens, single digits, but everywhere else is experiencing quite the warm weather, and I'm jealous. In, Log in Utah specifically, we had some struggles here. Logan, not very warm, Salt Lake to the 38, and even Southern Utah, 44. So we're not getting quite there. As far as the snow goes, this, this is beautiful because I hate snow, and I love that we are not in any danger right now of having too much coming our way. Now for a five-day forecast, you can see that today was 28 with a low of 22. Friday, we're getting warmer, we're getting warmer, and 33 with a low of 19, Saturday, 37, we're getting there. Sunday, however, a little bit of a hiccup. We got possible snow, possible rain, it's scary stuff, and Monday, 35 with a low of 15. All right, that sounds awesome. I'm glad that it's finally warming up around here. It's horrible out there. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the weekend. That'll oh, be awesome. Wow. <laughs> Coming All down. right, thanks, Lee. <laughs> 
coming up on sports. Ben Clifford has a massive dunk last week, but where does it rank in our list of top 10 plays? G morning sunshine. Wakey wakey. Text me. Are your parents home later? We can hang. LUV love you. JK. Holla back. Holla back. Holla back. <laughs> Are you with your friends? That's lame. We're in a huge fight right now. XO. What do you dream about? Something I did. Are you on your way to the I'm beach? Lonely. Nude pics. Send me some. Text me. The Copy Center on the first floor of the TSC is open Monday through Friday, 7 to 6, for all your document needs. Let the trained staff help you print important documents. Services include binding, color copies, custom gifts from your favorite photos, and last-minute items like pencils, report covers, and especially Scantrons. The Copy Center. We're here to help. Robinson here with your ATV Sports. Well, Aggie soccer highly decorated defender Natalie Norris received yet another honor last week. Nana was invited to the Combine for FC Kansas City for part of the newly formed Women's Soccer League. Out of 65 players, Norris and eight other players were selected from an open tryout to be part of the Invitational Combine. The Combine is this weekend, March 2nd and March 3rd. Norris was named the WAC Tournament's Most Valuable Player and she is also a three-time All-WAC First Team Player. Will Davis was turning some eyes this week at the Combine after having the top performances in both the 20-yard shuffle and the three-cone drill, coming in first place out of the entire Combine with a time of 6.52. Davis is projected to go in either the second or the third round and with an overall grade of 71%. As Aggie sports start slowing down and coming to an end, we wanted to look back at some of the biggest moments from this semester. Starting at number 10, Brian Gibbons dangles through defenders. No one can stop him here, putting the puck past the BYU goalie. Landing at number 9 is Sarah Landis, most almost sticking a perfect dismount on her all way to the all around. Number 8, this three pointer by newcomer Spencer Butterfield bounces in, sending the Aggies to overtime. Up next at number seven are Cooper Lim's three straight goals in the third period, leading the Aggies to a win. Exploding at six, this play no one expected Clifford's dunk last week against Illinois State. At five, another from gymnastics, Jones nailing an Arabian double front. We haven't yet seen this in a routine. Taking flight at four, Keyshawn Reed with a massive one-arm dunk over defender, which is up for a national award. Debuting at number three, freshman Kenzie Martinez with a, her high score of 9.825 on vault and bars after winning both events. Showing late heroics at number two is Preston Medlin hitting the off-balance three, sending the game in overtime. Aggies beat Idaho 82-75. And to round off our top four 10 plays is Devin Christensen here drilling three straight three-pointers and in the process becoming USU's all-time leading scorer. Christensen is one of four Aggie seniors who are suiting up for their final two home games this weekend. All four said their final night on the court will be bittersweet. Our senior class led by Devin Christensen and, and, and Jenna Johnson, of course we've got Pua in that, in that mix, a threesome. And, uh, it's toughest on the seniors because they've been here and done it for three straight years. All of a sudden new coach, new, new philosophy comes in and uh, they have responded in, a, in an admirable way. It's been a battle, but I think as a team we've been, we've been forming and we've been challenged a lot and we've found a way to come together and build that team chemistry. The whole experience, almost four years now, from my freshman year to now coming up on graduation, um, every year has been my favorite year. First eight out of nine games were on the road. It's a brutal schedule. Uh, just, just tore us up physically and emotionally and mentally. Uh, now we've had a, a schedule conducive home and away games. Uh, game plans kicking in, consistency's kicking in, and led by our seniors, uh, we have a strong desire to be in the NCAA tournament this year for the first time for the Aggies. The goals for the remainder of the season, obviously, to try and win the WAC and um, get a high seed for the WAC tournament, so that we're in a good position to win the WAC tournament and get to the NCAA tournament. Being an Aggie for four years, 
uh, has been an awesome experience and to be remembered in the record books for breaking any record at all is just a fun thing. I've had an amazing experience. I couldn't have asked for anything else. Um, the coaching staff that I've been provided with, the teammates that I've had, I just couldn't have asked of anything else. The thing I've enjoyed the most at Utrecht is definitely my teammates. Um, hanging out with my teammates is always fun. Going over to Jenna and Jen's house and playing games like reverse charades with our team is always really fun. Saturday against UTSA, the Aggies will honor their four seniors, Christensen, Johnson, Giop, and Furtado. While the Aggie women are on a roll heading into the WAC tournament, the Jazz haven't been so lucky. Last night, the Jazz went head-to-head -head with the Atlanta Hawks at home on a two-game losing streak. The Jazz looked to turn things around, but the Hawks easily picked up their fifth straight road victory. Al Horford had a career game scoring 35 points and 15 rebounds. The Jazz struggled to stop Atlanta in the paint, giving up easy scores. They never were able to recover here. Devin Harris drives past the Jazz big men to score an easy layup. So the Jazz have had, you know, kind of a rough season. What, what about y'all? What's your favorite team? Well, I'm a Bulls fan, and unless Rose comes back, I don't see us doing much. Yeah. All right. Well, com coming up next. Still to come. Hey, man. What's up? Man, I'm out of the club. I'm with two beautiful girls. We're drunk, man. We're so drunk. You got a ride home, or are you driving? Yeah. I'm going to push the Cavalier into gear. Push, push the, the Cavalier into gear! Yeah! Oh, no, man. Don't drive. I'm on my way. Don't worry. I'll be there in a second. What, it, what would it be like if books could talk? Meryl Kazir Human Library may not have that, but it does have a collection of humans willing to tell their stories. Books. They're the sum of human information. But are they? Could it be that talking to another human being could be just as useful? I think it's a great idea. Talking to people and hearing what they have to say as well. I think it's a great program. I'd love to be either a book or somebody checking out a book. All the books have agreed to talk about whatever topic they have expertise in to anybody who wants to check them out for a half hour and have a conversation. The question becomes, why check out a person when you can just go find a book instead? Well, I had heard about human libraries um, actually quite a while ago. I heard there was one in Sweden. I thought, what a great idea. I started looking into it more and found out there's an organization. These events happen around the world. So I thought, oh, how can we tie into this? This sounds like a great idea. Normally, if you want information, you just get on the internet or actually read a book. But to have somebody tell you their experiences could be a lot more valuable. There's a lot to be said about personal experiences, and perhaps students don't really have a chance to talk to people with more experience that often. Perhaps that's the draw here. Well, it's good to think about, and it's always good to be able to kind of have a personal connection with someone. And then, you know, we were talking about other readings, and it's one of those things where I think it's just good to be able to get other world views, whether or not you agree with them. Or well, um, it was a good experience, like, to be, to be talking with someone who had a different experience that I've ever had. Randall Henry, ATV News. You can watch the events calendar on U the USU website to find times for the next Human Library event. Thanks for watching ATV News. We leave you with the music from the Battle of the Bands. Rock out, Aggies.